Welcome to an exclusive skill capped guide for BFA patch 8.3. Throughout the final season of BFA, we'll be releasing select guides from our site here on YouTube. If you're interested in seeing more new content like this every week, alongside our exclusive matchup review series in which we cover in detail exactly how to win the hardest and most popular matchups, head over to skillcap.com. Hello everyone, Joe Fernandez here and today I'll be going over a Rat Paladin 8.3 guide. This will cover essences, traits, gear, talents, your rotation and the playstyle of a Rat Paladin. For this guide we used footage from Pikachu, a well known multi rank 1 Rat Paladin from EU that consistently plays Rat at high ratings in both arena brackets. Be sure to follow his Twitch if you want to check out more high end Rat gameplay. Starting off things with essences, there are three main major essences you want to focus on. These are Vision of Perfection, Conflict and Strife, and Breath of the Dying, or the Crucible of Flame. Vision of Perfection will be your best pick for max DPS if you are able to maintain uptime on your targets. This is because your Avenging Wrath allows you to deal a ton of extra damage, which can also catch your enemies off guard. Conflict and Strife will be taken mostly if you play a melee cleave in 3v3 arena games. Having access to Unbound Freedom for you and your fellow melee will most likely be needed so you can keep up on elusive targets. You'll rarely use conflict in twos unless you're against targets which make it difficult to connect without the use of unbound freedom, such as against mages. Breath of the Dying and the Crucible of the Flame are nice picks when you want more ranged damage, which is mostly taken in 2v2 games. You'd choose the Crucible of the Flame over Breath of the Dying if you want even more ranged damage, as you have two charges for more pressure. As for your minor traits, these are mostly straightforward as one spot should be Conflict and Strife or Vision of Perfection, depending on whichever one you aren't using in your Major Essence slot. For the other two minor slots, you can choose between Breath of the Dying, Memory of Lucid Dreams, and Ripple in Space Miners. At rank 3, Breath of the Dying is a powerful choice, giving you increased damage throughout your arena games. Memory of Lucid Dreams is also a good choice, giving you a solid amount of extra pressure taken if you don't have access to other minor slots. Ripple in Space can be a nice option when using your mobility to chase down targets, as it gives you 5% extra movement speed, which stacks with other increased movement speed effects. This can be excellent with a Disc Priest, stacking with their body and soul or feathers for faster mobility. It also gives you a solid amount of extra primary stat, giving you more damage. Rare Paladins have an interesting trait choice as there are 4 mandatory traits, with the last two being up to debate as to what's best or simply using what you have access to. The four mandatory traits are using three Avengers Might and one Light's Decree. Avengers Might is simply the best to stack as it gives you the most damage during your Avenging Wrath. This is important as a Rep Paladin, as most of your kills come from Avenging Wrath, especially in 2v2. For this reason, this is why Light's Decree is also powerful, giving you an extra five seconds during your Avenging Wrath, which is basically more time for you to land a kill. As for the last two traits, you can choose between one to two Indomitable Justice, one Empyrean Power, and one Relational Normalization Gizmo. Empyrean Power is a nice damage bonus to have, literally giving you damage for free. You want to have one of these after prioritizing the four mandatory traits. The Gizmo is basically taken when using Engineering Helm, which you would want to use against heavy bleed classes such as rogues or feral druids, as you gain self cauterizer. Indomitable Justice is a nice bonus to your judgement damage, taken as your leftover trait choices. As for your defensive traits, the only one you'll want to have is ideally one Gallant Steed trait, as it gives you cooldown reduction on your Divine Steed, one of your major mobility moves. Gearing remains a vital feat for succeeding in World of Warcraft, so it's important you gear correctly in order to improve your character's performance. With stats, you want to use the following priority. Versatility, then haste or mastery, followed by strength, with lastly crit. Versatility is by far the best, giving you damage reduction which is needed as you are a kill target in most situations. Haste is arguably better than mastery here, but both are good for damage increase and you shouldn't completely ignore mastery. Ideally you want a minimum of 15% haste and roughly around 35 to 40% mastery. This leaves us with crit, being a stat you want to avoid as it's the worst stat for a retribution paladin, as well as crit value being significantly lower in arena. Trinkets are also an important part of gearing your character. You want to gather different trinkets as you can swap them out for certain matchups which could make it more beneficial for you. On use trinkets are incredibly powerful with a rep paladin as you can use this alongside your Avenging Graph, giving you a greater chance to land kills. The best one for Red is Vial of Animated Blood, as it aligns up with your Avenging Graph when playing with the Vision of Perfection as your major essence. 
If unable to acquire this or not using vision as a major essence, then you can use the corrupted badge in its place giving you versatility which can be nice defensively as well. You want to use your on-use trinkets with your Avenging Graph so you gain massive burst damage with your wings, required you have uptime, allowing you to crush your enemies quickly, getting your big defensive cooldowns from the enemy team or just landing kills. You could pair your on-use trinket with a proc trinket which can help give you more passive and burst damage in arena games. The trinket from Alchemy can be extremely strong as you can line it up with your burst damage, giving you a massive strength proc in comparison to the Insignia Trinket. However, it doesn't proc as often in comparison to the Insignia, so the Insignia could be a nice choice if you want more passive pressure, as well as being used if you favour other professions than Alchemy. Another one that can be situational is the Trinket from Rathian in the new raid. It gives a haste proc as well as movement speed, which can be used in niche situations in 2s or 3s, potentially giving you the mobility you need in order to keep up to certain targets. Lastly, there can be defensive trinkets to be used, but the only one worth using is the Emblem Trinket, giving you extra HP which can be very powerful for offensive setups from the enemy team. This is much better than the Safeguard, as Safeguard can be dispelled, is affected by dampening, and is double the cooldown to proc compared to the Emblem. As for other gearing, one of the best items to get is the Cut of Death weapon. It gives you a strong amount of damage, which is nice if you're being kited too much, giving you extra pressure constantly. If wanting to increase your chances of getting better gear, you can level up your blacksmith and jewel crafting professions, being able to craft gear. Blacksmith allows you to craft a 470 belt or legs with a socket, whereas jewel crafting gives you a 470 ring with a socket. Be careful though as these items can be strong, but they could easily be replaced by good corruption gear if you get lucky with it. As mentioned slightly earlier, engineering count can be a great pick as you gain a high item level as rent with good traits. It also gives you bleed removal which is very strong against Acerogues and Feraldruids. Corruption can improve your character immensely, mostly giving a lot of extra pressure with the right corruption pieces. However, generally speaking, you want to try and avoid being over 40 corruption as this could be troublesome in Arena. Infinite Stars sims the highest for rep paladins, but you need rank 3 corruption level for it to be worth. It deals large amounts of damage and could be prone to dispel, allowing you to punish that with a Maledict or Hammer of Justice. Gushing Wounds provides the highest damage for its corruption cost, making it highly valuable. This makes it easy to use as you gain a lot of damage from it whilst not gaining much corruption. The Twisted Appendage is also a solid pick provided you have high corruption value from it. It deals high amounts of damage and will force enemy players to have to kill this tentacle off. If unable to kill the tentacle, then it will deal an amazing amount of extra pressure, leading to forcing defensive cooldowns more unexpectedly or landing kills. Obsidian skin can be found on the two-hand weapon from Mount, which can do some serious damage if you have the heroic or mythic weapon versions of it. However, Cut of Death will be more favourable, as you can pick up more valuable corruption elsewhere, but it could be a nice choice if unable to get other corruption gear. Aside from these offensive corruptions, you could also use Versatile, which is great corruption to increase your versatility by a ton, giving you more damage and a good amount of damage reduction. This is the highest recommended corruption at the highest rank, as it gives 12% extra versatility at only the cost of 20 corruption. When it comes to your standard talents and PvP talents, your build will look something like this. These talents are chosen most of the time in 2v2 situations. For 3v3, you'll be playing the same build, with the exception of using Unbreakable Spirit over Cavalier most of the time. You'll take this if you intend to play aggressively and try to win games rapidly. Cavalier is better against teams that can't kill you quickly, so you can have an increased amount of mobility. As for PvP talents, Blessing of Sanctuary can be a popular choice if your team values it to get out of important stuff. This will be the case in 3s against comps relying on stun kill windows, as well as in 2s against holy paladins or specifically acid disc compositions. Unbound Freedom will also be a nice choice when playing a melee cleave comp and you don't have Conflict and Strife as your major essence. This is nice when you want to play with Vision of Perfection major essence so you can pump more pressure throughout the game. There are a few situational talents you can take mainly in 2s. You can change Zeal with Blade of Wrath when you want more consistent damage outside of wings. They also have great synergy with Law and order, allowing you to keep up your snare more often, making it easier for yourself to deal damage and catch up to targets. Repentance can be an incredible talent in twos as well, being great against holy paladins, misweaver monks and disc priests as well. It's great against comps where you can kill the DPS with crowd control chains onto the enemy healer. It also has excellent synergy with priests as they can get a fear out of it. Note that you should not use this against Restodruids or shamans as they could shapeshift it, 
being immune to the repentance on themselves. As for general alternative talents, Blinding Light can be a good choice against Rogue Mage compositions in both 2s and 3s. You will mainly use it as a peeling option as shown here, using it on both DPS in order to stop any aggression on them in its path. This will allow you to live more comfortably and could force trinkets from the enemy team as well. When struggling with wing conditions during your wings, you could opt for Crusade to increase your pressure in this window. A good example is against Restodruids in 2s, where you have a small window to land kills onto them, so gaining Crusade stacks will increase your burst pressure whilst you can connect, making it unhealable for them if you maintain uptime. It could also be paired with Vengeance Aura when against Destro Warlock teams, as Warlocks won't be able to kite you compared to other classes, allowing you to deal extra damage onto them. Inquisition can also work well with Vengeance Aura if you want maximum damage and lack utility. Another niche PvP talent you could use is Jurisdiction. This is used in 2s against Resto Druids if you want to make swaps onto them, as well as in 3s when playing melee cleave comps if you rely on this to get crowd control on healers. When it comes to your rotation, there's basically 3 golden rules to stick to when doing your rotation. You want to avoid spending holy power if you can use the holy power generator, you should use judgment on cooldown, and you don't want to waste any holy power. So say if you have 3 holy power and blade of justice is ready, that means you should use blade of justice before using templar's verdict. Using judgment on cooldown is necessary as you'll be playing with lawbringer, which makes judgment deal more damage, meaning it becomes a higher priority to your other abilities for PvP. To not waste holy power, you don't use blade of justice if you have 4 holy power, as this will waste the holy power generation you gain from blade of justice. You also want to avoid using wake of ashes unless you have 0 holy power, as using it will make you gain 5 holy power. Other things you should bear in mind with your rotation is that you want to take advantage of your ranged damage abilities. These abilities can deal damage from ranged, being able to pull them off whilst you're being kited, which can be a common occurrence as a rep paladin. There is also an inquisition bug right now that you can abuse in order to gain more damage at the start of the game. To do this, you want to spec into divine purpose in the starting room and spam divine storm until you get a proc. Then spec and use Inquisition with the proc before the gates open. This gives you a free Inquisition at the start of the game. Now we can move on into the playstyle of a Red Paladin. One key aspect of a Red Pally is to play around your Hammer of Justice. You rely on your stun as it gives most of your momentum for a Red Paladin. So timing this well with crowd control chains on healers or used as kill attempts during your stun duration is the best way to use your Hammer of Justice. Both of these ways of using Hammer of Justice will allow you to have more pressure and value out of your Hammer of justice, making it troublesome for the enemy to deal with you, having to use big cooldowns to survive and peel you excessively. Since Hammer of Justice can be dispelled, there are a few guidelines you want to follow in order to not waste it. The generic ones that are easy to do is that you can simply stun the healer for CC or to kill them. Other ways to do this are quite niche. You could stun a DPS target out of line of sight from his healer. This may not commonly happen, but doing this at the right time can easily score a kill or force big defensive cooldowns from them. You may also want to stun a DPS target whilst the enemy healer dispel is on cooldown. Doing this is only good if you and your partners have pressure on that DPS target. Knowing how to get value out of your stun is important as this plays into your next important playstyle, which is getting value from your Avenging Wrath. Looking back at the clip where Pikachu times a great Hammer of Justice, you can see that he has Crusade stacks, plus his badge trinket during a kill attempt on the Mistweaver. This allows him to get incredibly high value out of his crusade, almost taking down a Mistweaver through his cocoon in a short amount of time. Since Red Paladins have weak mobility, you will need to use your mobility effectively in order to have pressure during the times you can connect. A good way to use freedom is when you want to connect to a healer. In order to connect pressure, either chasing them down with damage or during stuns depending on the situation. You will often need to use freedom with your divine steed against targets that are difficult to reach. Sometimes you may need to use it defensively to kite offensive cooldowns from the enemy team, allowing you to retreat safely to a pillar to avoid pressure. Since rares can be a vulnerable target, you want to be smart with your defensive cooldowns. This means trying to hold onto your divine shield as long as possible, usually trading it after your team has used their cooldowns to keep you alive. You want to use divine shield only when you will die without it, thus avoiding certain death and being able to prolong an 
arena game. You can use Divine Shield aggressively in order to land a kill and immune yourself from CC, but this can be a high risk play and only should be attempted if you are certain you can get a kill on your target. When playing with Blessing of Sanctuary, it's important to not waste this cooldown. To do this, you should communicate within your team when you can use it so you don't overlap it with other cooldowns instead and rotate it well within your team. It will also make sure your healer is ready to avoid any follow up crowd control when Blessing of Sanctuary is used. Shield of Vengeance can be a powerful defensive cooldown, which can be used used against enemy offensive cooldowns if your healer is unable to deal with the pressure. It could also be used aggressively to counter pressure the enemy, dealing massive damage, especially during your wings. As for your blessing of protection, similar to your divine shield, you'll want to use this as best as you can, making sure you use it to deny high impact kill attempts from the enemy team. For example, it could be used against an Asa Rogue's Vendetta in a late game scenario if your healer is unable to survive it. Here we see Zen and Pikachu struggling from the Asa Rogue Disc's pressure during a vendetta, which gets bobbed late due to other defensive cooldowns being used, but Bob is still needed regardless. Pikachu secures Repentance as well, which now allows them to counter pressure and keep Zen alive. This lets Zen chain the Repentance with a fear and land a kill on the Rogue, showing how an important Bob can save your teammates from dying and allow you to win the game. That's everything on the Retribution Paladin 8.3 guide. Feel free to plus skill this guide if it helped and leave any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next guide.